Hello everyone, um, welcome to the second lecture. Um, so this lecture is first of four lectures um, during which we will talk about the major development theories over time. Um, so what exactly are development theories? Well, development theories are theories that suggest how development actually take place um, in different societies. So we can see that from 1960s to 1990s, um, people really talk about development differently over time. And remember that in our first lecture, we talk about how development as an idea has shaped our worldview of who is the developed and developing. And it is taken for granted that all developing countries are working hard towards becoming developed, which refer to some specific indicators like income level, technology, and social services like education and health, etc. So this linear progressive way of development has been really heavily influenced by a person named um, W. W. Rostow. He wrote a very influential book called Stages of Economic Growth, a Non-Communist Manifesto. So remember last week that we were saying that the U.S. Point Fork program was initiated in a Cold War era. And one very important agenda of development um, by President Truman is to fight communism. So this is quite obvious in Rostow's book, right? Since he used the word manifesto, uh, non-communist manifesto specifically. When he wrote this book, it seems that he was not really trying to hide the ideology behind it. But what is fascinating is how much this manifesto has affected so many thinkers and also common people today in a way that they do not realize they are being influenced by it at all. So unlike people who follow Karl Marx, the Communist Manifesto, who will call themselves the Marxists, um, people who actually have very similar thoughts with Rostow will not call themselves Rostowists or modernists, right? They just take it as um, the way the world is um, and didn't take it as a way of thinking, as a specific ideology. So from the 1960s, um, we have the modernizations and industrialization theories. Um, I'm going to pull up a screen here, um, just a moment. Um, so this is the screens um, that shows you the different development theories from the 1950s. Um, to 1990s. And, and today we are going to focus on um, developmentalism, uh, which is modernization and industrialization. So who the hell is um, Walt Wyman Rostow, right? Um, he has been so influential yet um, not that many people heard of his name. Um, so he's actually an American economist and political theorist. And he has been very active in, um, you know, um, supporting the U.S. administration, um, being a foreign policy advisor to John F. Kennedy, and also a national security advisor to the POTUS um, from 1966 to 1969. And he's a strong supporter of the U.S. Vietnam War as well. So this has made him a little bit less popular towards the end of his career. And as I say, he is the author of the book Stages of Economic Growth, a Non-Communist Manifesto. So um, this is Rostow five stages of economic growth, which he suggested in his book. And this is a diagram of it, uh, which I've taken from a website by PSU. And so basically Rostow idea is that, you know, um, human societies have to go through five stages in order to achieve development. And then the first of here he was saying is the traditional society where there's limited technology, um, people are living in a self-subsistent economy, and it is a static society where people live just like their ancestors do. And then he kind of emphasized that transitions, um, especially triggered by external influence, interests, or markets, will make them wanting to change and, and kind of prepare for some preconditions for takeoff. 
Um, so these preconditions include commercial exploitation of agriculture extractive industry, and then um, including some installations of physical infrastructure and emergence of social political elite. And then it will proceed to take off if the preconditions are all fulfilled. And then there will be development of uh, manufacturing sector, and then there will be more investment exceeding 10%, and then it will drive the whole economy to maturity and development of wider industrial and commercial base, and before becoming a society of high mass consumption. So if you remember the sustainable development goals, one of the development goal is sustainable cities and consumption. So this is a very interesting conjuncture here. Um, the 1960 modernization ultimately talks about um, developing high mass consumption and how our new sustainable development goal actually asks for sustainable consumption. Okay, so I have taken some few examples um, from Rostorbrook about what he means by the preconditions of takeoff, right? So basically, he really emphasizes the transitional period as a response to intrusion of foreign power. So in his argument, it has to be a foreign um, influence that comes in or like a market or a foreign power that makes people want to change. And what kind of change that he's talking about? So he's talking about people should transition from thinking about self-sufficiency to nations and international settings. So we have to think in terms of nation rather than in terms of our own society or our own family unit. And even we have to think about how to take advantage of the international setting. So he was really talking about the change of thinking here. And then he talk about how resources concentrated on landowners, um, which uh, previously, if you are doing an agricultural economy or rural economy, um, the wealth will be concentrated on landowners' hands. And these resources concentrated on their hands should be diverted to infrastructure building in states. And then he talks about how men should be valued not for connections, with clans, with tribes, but for their ability to perform specialized functions. And then he said that there should be a change of mentality that physical environment is not given, um, but can be manipulated to productive change. So basically what you can see here, um, most of this transition that he is suggesting he was suggesting was about change of values and mentalities. Um, so change of ideas, if you can say that. And surprisingly, this, this um, ideas have been very influential in today's development world. So for example, um, from thinking about self-sufficiency to nation and international setting. So there have been major organizations being established to promote international trade, um, such as UNCTAD, um, Trade and Development, and also World Trade Organizations, right? And then their resources concentrated on land owners should be diverted to infrastructure building. This is kind of um, the infrastructure building part kind of being supported by the World Bank. World Bank really funded a lot of um, infrastructure building projects. And then um, a lot of education and training programs in the countries uh, worldwide are actually supporting um, special skills of men. And also, um, interestingly, um, physical environment can be manipulated to productive change. Um, this is really manifested by the notion of Anthropocene. Um, if you haven't heard of Anthropocene, Anthropocene basically is a term first coined by geologists to say that um, now um, we are living in an era where human beings are making permanent, permanent and significant changes on the earth, um, such as climate change. Like climate change can have really um, drastic implications on different ecosystems. So uh, the increase of carbon dioxide is believed to be caused by human beings. So, uh, Climate change is one example of how humans are really manipulating 
the physical environment to productive change. But it also becomes a problem now and being widely recognized also by the Sustainable Development Goals. So um, I want to show you some in-text quotes um, by Rostow on uh, the non-economic changes that he was talking about um, to achieve development. So he was talking that more generally in rural as in urban areas, the horizon of expectation must leave, must leave and men must become prepared for a life of change and specialized functions. So in Germany, it was certainly a nationalism based on past humiliation and future hope um, that caused um, uh, Germany to take off, right? Um, and then it also talks about Although imperial powers pursued policy which did not always optimize the development of the preconditions for takeoff, they could not avoid bringing about transformation in thought, knowledge, institution, and the supply of social overhead capital, which moved the colonial society along the transitional path. And they often included modernization as a sort of one explicit object of colonial policy. So let's look at what he was saying. He was saying that um, people in the rural areas and the urban areas should change their mindset. And also he's talking about how um, nationalism is important. And interestingly, use Germany because um, Hitler is kind of a product of fierce um, nationalism. And also um, about how imperial power actually um, help countries um, to transition. So there are a lot of... Um, arguments that will be really controversial today. Um, so criticisms of it. Um, mm. So it basically assumes all humans can progress using rational thinking or through a way of westernization to achieve development, right? And then it also assumes only one model of development. All countries will go through these similar stages of growth. So my first interlude here is, do you think Rostow's work has been very influential in very successful in influencing today's world. Um, write down some examples. And then before you go to the next part of the lecture, I would like you to watch a video on dependency theory, uh, which I have um, provided the link on Canvas page before proceeding to the next part of 